Hi guys, today we're going to finish up our discussions on crimes against the person by looking at our last few crimes which fall under the umbrella of sexual assault. And sexual assault is sort of like homicide in that that term doesn't necessarily refer to one specific crime. Rather, it encompasses uh, several different crimes that all make up sexual assault. And when we're looking at sexual assault in Pennsylvania, um, like in most states, it has a pretty big range, and it can range from anything um, beginning with verbal threats all the way up to unwanted sexual contact, which in a lot of states is simply called rape. So when we think of sexual assault, a lot of times the first crime we think of is actual rape itself. Um, and I know for a lot of you, I just want to mention this at the beginning here, I know for a lot of you this can be sort of a sensitive topic, so if you do have questions that you want to ask about today's notes and you don't want to post them on the Google Classroom where everyone can see them, feel free to either make a private comment or email me, um, and then I can write back and hopefully clarify any questions that you might have. So in Pennsylvania, the elements of rape are pretty straightforward. It's sexual penetration without consent. And it can be aggravated rape if you use a weapon or some other type of force. So when we look at rape, um, the basic elements, sexual penetration without consent of the victim. And then there are varying degrees of rape. Like I said, there can be aggravated rape um, if you actually use some type of force. So that's what the district attorney will look at when deciding what type of charges to bring against a defendant that is being charged with rape. And the big question that comes up in a rape case is how do we determine if the victim has consented? And this is what a lot of rape cases end up coming down to is you have a victim and a defendant. And a lot of times the victim will say that the defendant um, is you know, guilty of rape. And you'll hear the defendant arguing that uh, they didn't actually rape the victim because the victim consented. So the courts have established different circumstances under which there is no consent. And in particular, we have no consent if the victim is unconscious, mentally incompetent, or under the impaired judgment by drugs or alcohol. And this is really a shift in thinking and how we used to think about consent um, several decades ago to how we think about consent today. And if you look at rape cases from several decades ago, the focus used to be on, did the victim say no? And a lot of times, if you didn't have a very clear no from the victim, uh, then it was very, very difficult to prove that there was rape. And we've had a shift in our thinking over the past several decades. And now what we look at is, do you have affirmative consent? So you might have a case where maybe somebody drinks too much and is unconscious. You're clearly not going to have someone say no in that case. Um, but since you don't have affirmative consent, you don't have a person saying yes. So in that case, it is rape. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that when you have a case involving rape, we're looking at the individual circumstance that's giving rise to these charges. And, you know, the courts will definitely consider to a certain extent if you have a history with this person, um, especially in taking into consideration the type of sentence that you might receive as a defendant. But you can't argue that because you have a history of um, consensual sex with a person that you're assuming they would consent on that particular occasion. So let's say you have a victim who is raped while they are unconscious, right? Um, the defendant might say, well, this victim and I have had sex prior. We've had sex 10 times before and they've always consented. So I just assumed that on this time, the 11th time they would consent, right? Um, that's not going to be sufficient. You, ha you have to have consent each time. So that's what the court's gonna look at in determining whether or not there is consent. Um, another thing that I want to point out, guys, a lot of times when we're looking at rape cases, statistically speaking, women tend to be the victims, but women can be guilty here. Um, so this isn't a crime that is always with a male defendant and a female victim. It could be, you know, male and male, female and female, um, or the male or the female could be the victim or the defendant. So it can go either way. 
Uh, the other crime that we're going to look at here, and these are really the only two that we're going to look at in this category, we're going to look at rape, which we just talked about. Um, the other one we're going to talk about today is statutory rape. Statutory rape is a little bit different than rape. Um, and you may recall when we first started talking about crimes earlier in the semester, we talked about how for most crimes you need to have a guilty state of mind. Guilty mens rea is what we called it. But I told you guys that there were going to be some exceptions to this. And one of the exceptions we talked about very briefly was statutory rape. And the thing about statutory rape is that a defendant can be found guilty of statutory rape even if they don't have that guilty state of mind, even if they didn't intend to commit a crime, all right? So let's talk about how statutory rape breaks down in Pennsylvania. And we basically have three categories of people based on age. And again, this is in Pennsylvania, and different states have different rules regarding what is called the age of consent. In Pennsylvania, if you are less than 13 years old, you cannot legally consent. And when I say you can't consent, I mean in the legal sense. If you have someone who is under the age of 13 and knows what sex is and willingly consents to having sex with someone who is older, they might say, well, I consented, all right? Um, in the legal sense, they did not consent. Basically what the courts have said is that if you are under the age of 13, you are too young to legally consent. So even if you said yes, uh, that's not going to count, all right? So if you're less than 13 years old, you cannot legally consent to having sex. If you are between the ages of 13 and 15 years old, you can consent under certain circumstances. And what we look at in Pennsylvania is, is the person that this 13 to 15 year old is engaged in sexual intercourse with, are they within four years of their age going up? All right. So if you have a 13 year old, they can consent to having sex with someone who is up to 17 as long as they're within four years. And the courts will actually look at the dates of the two parties' birthdays. So if you have a 13 year old and a 17 year old and they are four years and one month apart, even if they are four years and one day apart, the court's going to say that is statutory rape on the part of the older party. And it's the older party who has committed the crime here. All right. So what you'll look at, guys, is you'll look at the actual dates of their birthdays. And if you are between the ages of 13 and 15 as the as the victim, um, you're technically not the victim if the defendant is within four years of your age. All right. Um, and then the age of consent in Pennsylvania is 16 years old. So if a person is 16 or older and they are engaged in sexual intercourse with someone who is older than them, they are not going to be the victim of statutory rape. Now they could still be the victim of rape if they don't consent. But if you have two parties that consent and both parties are either 16 or older, um, then that is not going to be statutory rape. Okay, hopefully that's clear to you guys. If anybody has any questions, especially about the age ranges, usually when we do this in class, it takes an entire class period because a lot of you guys have a lot of questions. So if you do, again, please feel free to email me or, um, or put a private comment in the Google Classroom, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye.